This video explains great man theory, its origins, its different hero types, and its pros and cons. The story of the great man theory of leadership starts in the 1840s when Thomas Carlyle, a Scottish writer, philosopher, historian, and teacher, presented great man theory in a series of lectures. Great man theory stipulates that some people are born as truly exceptional people bound to become leaders. They will use the world and its events to find a way of becoming great leaders through one of six hero classes, divinity, prophet, poet, priest, king, or man of letters. Great man theory can be surprisingly attractive and luring, and some people get charmed by it, sometimes unwillingly. This theory kicks off our leadership theories of history walkthrough, which goes through classical, behavioral, and situational leadership. Click the link at the top of the screen if you're interested. According to the great man theory of leadership as defined by Carlyle, the class or type of hero is less relevant since a truly great man will take the shape of hero he or she chooses. The class selection depends on the circumstances, surroundings, and settings present when they are born and throughout their lives. Since great men are truly destined to become great leaders, they will assume any convenient shape to establish themselves as leaders. They all possess qualities within poetry, leadership, inspiration, etc. In the end, if you believe Carlyle, the most important factor of the world is to be the setting for the great men. This means that Napoleon became a king hero type of leader due to the world settings he experienced. Had he been born in another part of the world or another time, he would still likely have become a great leader, but perhaps a poet or a priest instead of an emperor. According to great man theory, great men have the following characteristics. 1. They are charismatic and pleasant company. Check out our video on charismatic leadership for more info. 2. They bring order to chaos. 3. They are born with traits making them capable of becoming great men. 4. They pick one out of six hero classes as an avenue of becoming a great leader, depending on what the world looks like during their time. Great man theory stipulates that a true leader belongs to one of the following six classes of heroes. Before we go through each of them in more detail, I'd like to ask you to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Divinity In his book, Carlyle mentioned the divinity type of great men as the hero in the form of a god or at least viewed as a god by followers. There are plenty of examples of divine heroes in Greek and Norse mythology, of which the latter receives a lot of attention by Carlyle with examples such as Odin, Thor, etc. Great man theory stipulates that the divine hero belongs to the past, in times without science, and new great men of this class do not emerge in modern times. The prophet hero of great man theory is the hero seen as an envoy, messenger or similar, on behalf of a god or several gods. As in the case of the divine hero, the prophet hero belongs to the past, and new ones cannot emerge in modern times, at least if you believe great man theory. The prophet hero is perceived as being in contact with the divine authorities, legitimating following the prophet. Jesus and Moses are examples of prophet heroes. Great man theory states that the poet hero is a hero of all ages, both older times and modern times. The poet is described as a thinker, a heroic warrior, politician, and philosopher in combination. This would be heroes such as Shakespeare, Dante, or Homer. According to Carlyle, the poet and the prophet are similar, but with one significant distinction, the poet teaches us what we are to love, whereas the prophet hero reveals what we should do. Priest Carlyle mentions Martin Luther as an example of a great man being a priest. Although Luther can be seen as quite the revolutionary character, Carlyle regards this as bringing order to chaos in this case. By the way, bringing order to chaos is essential to all heroes. The king hero of great man theory is again a hero that brings order to the world. The king is a commander of men, who people are loyal to and benefit from following. Carlyle mentions how Napoleon brought order to the chaotic French Revolution. I can only assume that Carlyle means king as an autocrat or dictator, albeit a person of good character at least in the view of Carlyle. Compare with autocratic leadership style, which has a hero, or prophet-type version of it, as the strong commanding leader who saves everyone from destruction. Man of Letters Rousseau is an example of this type of hero. The Man of Letters type hero describes what man is capable of, 
thereby inspiring the masses. The man of letters possesses originality, sincerity, and genius. The man of letters hero is very much dependent on printing technologies enabling books for spreading his message, making this the newest hero class. Great man theory is a historical approach to leadership that has been debunked many times over. Hence, it is a stretch to connect advantages and disadvantages to this theory. It would be like asking about the strengths and weaknesses of the world being flat. In fact, you should learn about great man theory, but never use it. You are much better off using the six leadership styles by Goldman. Check out our video on that topic by clicking at the top of the screen. For what it's worth, I've attempted to put words to any pros and cons of great man theory that I can invent. Before we list them all, please like this video and subscribe to our channel, I sure would appreciate it. The advantages of great man theory are It helped to bring focus on leadership and its elements. It was heavily criticized, furthering the leadership debate in the 1800s. The disadvantages are No scientific research supports the theory. Assuming that leaders are born, it removes the possibility of learning to become a leader, which can reduce initiative and learning of aspiring leaders. The simplicity of the theory is attractive to people desperate for leadership, which is why cult leaders often use similar ways of asserting power. I hope you enjoyed watching this video, please click like and subscribe to our channel. This video was brought to you by leadershipahoy.com.